guys, today I got a 2003 Ford Expedition and it has a problem with the temperature blend door actuator in the rear for the rear HVAC system on the vehicle. All that's doing is clicking when they're turning the temperature from cold to hot and the temperature is never changing on there. Now this one's not as easy to change out as the mode door that when you just pop a couple term, uh, uh, covers off on here and you're there. This one for the temperature blend door actuator is a little more buried and we're going to have to pull this whole back panel off of here and I'm going to show you how to do that today. Oh boy, here comes the jets. I'll just wait. Oh, that was nice too. Okay. So anyways, so the part that has actually failed on here is called a temperature blend door actuator and it's for the rear HVAC system. There's only one on there and you can get it from your dealer for about $90 or you can get it from Amazon for about $49 shipped to your door. So it's your choice. Now the part number that's most common on these, you have to check your actual fitment guide on Amazon or otherwise is YH1767. That's the part number from Motorcraft on there. Now, the part that you get from Amazon is not a cheap knockoff. It still is the Ford part. You can see it right here. So it's your choice. You can get from your dealer probably the same day or Amazon in a few days. So it's up to you. All right, now in order to get to this actuator, it's like right smack dab in the middle here, mounted on its side here. So you're supposed to pull this whole quarter panel interior trim panel off of here, which involves a lot, a lot of work and a lot of points for breakage on there. So I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to get this actuator. We're gonna unbolt it, and we're only gonna take off a few panels on here, reach our arms in, we can get it off of there. Now we're still gonna loosen this panel, but we're not gonna take it all the way off of here. So the first thing we're gonna do right here is take off a little sill plate. You can literally just grab it your hands and maybe a little pry your cat claw and it'll come right up on there. You can literally just pick it up on there and it comes right off. Put that to the side. And then we're gonna take off these D and C pillar trim panels. We're just gonna pop them off though. We're not gonna actually take them all the way off because that requires a lot of other extra fasteners and the such on there. So all you gotta do is get, get behind here with your cat claw, same thing. You'll see the little retainers in there. The ones here and one's here. Let's get behind them and pull, and then we're gonna pull this off a little more. And then we're gonna go after the panel itself right here. Same thing. You just pry out, and they're not that tough, and you just pop them off them at that point. And we're just gonna loosen it like this. We're not gonna take the whole thing out. All right, and the same thing over here, you open the door, flip the seat up, and we're gonna start pulling the panel here away from the, the body. And then of course right here, we're gonna get the seat pillar pulled away just so it's like this and flopping. At that point, we're gonna go after the cup holder and this access panel right here. What you do is you push up on here, and then you get a cat claw on top, something like that. And once it's popped, you can do it by hand. Like that, and it'll just pull all the way. And then of course this right here, same thing. You'll be able to get a cat claw underneath here. And once it pops up like that, you can just pull it off of here. No big deal. At this point, we can reach in here, and then reach in here, and use our light, and we'll be able to unscrew it out of there. You can see it's pulled away from the wall just a little bit like this and there's actually plenty of room inside of here. All right now once you have the cover off up top here and the cup holder gone from here we have a lot of working room actually inside of here without pulling out anything else off. What is suggested is something like this a pad a, a piece of two by four something like that against the case and against the outside uh, 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 interior trim cover here and it'll push it out and hold it out so you have plenty of working room. After that, you come right here in the middle and you look straight down. Let me zoom in. And right there is the actuator. It's mounted on the side of the case like that. And just pull back on this electrical connector right here and pull it out and we'll get that out of the way. And then over here, you see it's already disconnected over there, that little metal uh, tang. That holds the um, wire harness to the case you want that out of the way and then that'll be all out of the way 
and then you simply unscrew these three eight millimeter screws. Of course, one over here is already out of there. And what works best for that actually is this right here. It's eight millimeter gear wrench that has a flex head on it and it can really get in there and wrench and get them out pretty quick on there without getting your hands deep down in there and all cut up. All right, so I know this is a really bad camera angle, but we're gonna get in here and we're gonna show you how this flex head works. So you just get your hands through the cup holder here, right here, and you put pressure on that flex head. And the other one, simply unscrew this. So you can see there's plenty of room in here. If you're just smart about it, you don't need to take the whole freaking car apart. And bend these plastic pieces out, they're so big and flexible, they'll be just fine. Get this other one. This one's a little more restricting, but you can see with the angle of the flex head I got going here, I can still get a good throw. We got our connector disconnected already. Just make sure you don't drop these screws. And then this simply pulls out of here. We'll wiggle. Get it up and out of there. Now, as a pre check before putting that new actuator back in there to make sure this door is not sticking and it's going to ruin the new actuator, is we're going to pull this shaft out of the old actuator and then we're going to stick it in that slot that it goes in. You just got to find the hole on there and turn, turn, turn till it just falls right in, like so. And then we're going to take the shaft on here and we're going to move the door inside of there back and forth and it should do just like this it should literally just fall it's gonna have some weight to it but it should not bind at any point along its travel on there else it's just gonna new, ruin the new actuator so that's just a quick little check you can you can do to make sure and most of these are usually fine just like this one is now going back in we kind of know the orientation we know that the um, electrical connections up top here and stuff like that but what we need to do first uh, is stick it in the hole in the box and get it lined up in there with the d-shaft in the side of there so that it's all lined up and it should slide right in without any kind of problems okay and once that's fully in there then you can come up here and start getting your first screws in and then I'll line up the rest of the post on there. After that, all you gotta do is screw in your three screws and then put in your electrical connector and we can start testing it out. Now as far as this cup holder, same thing. It just simply slides back into place like so and I'll click in nice and tight like that. All right, now as far as getting this back in there, there's a little trick to doing this. We're gonna put it in just like this, and we're gonna get all the hooks that are underneath here hooked under and centered and set in there, and we're gonna get this one hooked in also, like so. And we it's flush. Okay, we're gonna pull it tight. We're gonna pull, and then we're gonna push down on this side, and they'll literally snap in. And that way it's flush all the way around and fully secured. All right, so once you got it all back together, in order to test it, all you got to do is press your floor and roof button. Let it go over, turn your blower up a little bit, and then you can feel your roof vents. Make sure air's coming out. And floor vents when it's on floor. Should change over, no clicking, and it's very obvious that's fixed.